very, very excited because I'm about to start a new school year with my students. And as a teacher, because that's what I am at heart, obviously I have my favorite activities. And what I thought I'd do is just talk you through one of my favorites, which is a letter to my future self. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to do it first, and then I'll get up a presentation and I'll show you how I do it with my students. So what I'd like you to do is find a piece of paper in front of you, and I'd like you to hold it horizontally. Hold it horizontally and then put it down on your desk. So it's now in landscape format. In the bottom left-hand corner, I want you to draw a big circle. And apparently, if your circle is a perfect circle, you're a genius, according to Leonardo. Well, apparently it was Leonardo da Vinci who was able to draw a perfect circle. Once you've done that, on the right-hand side, in the bottom right-hand corner of your piece of paper, I want you to draw a second circle. And then halfway between the two circles, at the top, I want you to draw a third circle. Fantastic, I can see all those circles looking amazing. Now, in the middle of those circles, I want you to draw a smaller one. And in that smaller one, I want you to draw your own avatar. So how would you represent yourself? I can, I can just picture what you're drawing. And in a minute, I'm going to show you how I did my avatar. So, and finally, what I want you to do from that middle circle in the, in the middle, I want you to draw a line connecting each of the outlying circles. Okay, so you've now got a little circle with your avatar, one at the top, one on the left, and one on the right. In the one on the left, I want you to draw a little clock at the top. In, on the one on the right, I want you to draw a house. And at the very top, I want you to draw a picture of a school. Now, those of you who are completely lost, let me show you what I did. So this is one I prepared earlier. So as you can see, it's very, very simple. So we're gonna begin with the circle on the left, which is this one and the little clock. If you just put your pen down for a minute, I want you now to imagine, it's now June, 2023. I want you to imagine where you are, how you're feeling, the school year is coming to an end and everything that you've achieved. It's wonderful. You're feeling great. You've done a lot this year and you're feeling very, very positive. So we're gonna go back now to our circles and we're gonna begin with the one on the left. And this clock represents free time. Now, what I want you to think about, it's now September, in your free time, what would you like to achieve? Now, in my case, my goal for this academic year is to do more sport. A few years ago, I started running, but I stopped running during the lockdown. So my plan for this year is to start running again. And I think I'm going to do the Couch to 5K program, which is an app you can get on your phone and it trains you to be able to run in the after nine weeks. 5k. So in my circle, I'm going to put or I'm going to draw a picture of myself running, because that's what I want to do in my free time. So think about what you want to do. Under your picture, I want you to write, I hope to, and I want you to complete the sentence. So in my case, I'm going to write, I hope to take up running again. Okay. We're gonna move on and we're gonna look at the picture on the right. And in that picture, I asked you to, to draw a picture of your house. Can you imagine what that means? Yes, it represents your house, your home, where you live. And what are your goals for your home? And I think my goal is at home, I want to get more into cooking healthier food. I want to learn how to cook maybe more, uh, more healthy dishes, maybe make sure that I don't just snack at lunchtime, that I eat a proper lunch. I think maybe I'm gonna draw a picture of some food. 
So think about what you'd like to achieve at home. Maybe you'd like to cut down on the amount of social media you use, or maybe you want to use more social media. Maybe you want to redecorate your home over this year. Maybe you want to reorganize your living room. Think about what you'd like to achieve. Draw a picture, and underneath, I want you to complete the following sentence. I plan to, so in my case, I plan to eat more healthier and also learn to cook that food. Okay, in the top circle, I asked you to draw your school. And obviously this represents your work or your workplace. So I want you to try and think of a goal you'd like to set yourself for school. Now, mine's a difficult goal. What I find is I spend, I still spend, even after 33 years, too much time preparing things. And I don't leave enough space for improvisation. So I often, when the students have something that they want to tell me about, I get really nervous because I want to move on fast because I got prepared too much. So my goal is to leave more spaces in my lessons for the students to take it in their direction. So I'm going to draw a picture of my students. Underneath, I'd like you to write the words, I'd like to, and I'm going to write, I'd like to dedicate more time to my students, or I'd like to allow more space for my students. Okay, you should now have your three circles filled with your plans, your goals for this year. Notice we didn't, I didn't use the word promise because I feel that promises are difficult. And if you don't, if you break your promise, that's really frustrating. So I suggest that we don't use the word promise, but you might want to include the words, I don't want to. Now, if you turn over your piece of paper, you can begin to write a letter. And how I would begin the letter is, Hi, future me. I hope you're well. These are the goals I wrote in September 2022. And then I would list the goals. So I'd list the goals as I put on the front. So my goals would be, I hope to take up running again. I plan to cook healthy food. I'd like to allow more time in my lessons for my students. And at the bottom of the letter, I'm going to write, how have I done? And then I'm gonna sign the letter. So I've now written the letter. And what I now do is I take my letter and I fold it in half and in half again. So there's my letter. And on the front of the letter, I'm going to write, not to be opened until. Now, obviously, one of the dates is June 2023, but that, to my mind, is a long way to check up on my goals and my progress. So I'm also going to write December 2022. So I've got here on the front, not to be opened until December 2022 and June 2023. Come December, I'm going to open my letter and I'm going to check up on my goals and see how far I've achieved them. I'm also going to decide if I want to change anything or if I can now remove anything. I'm going to rewrite my letter, fold it up again, put it away somewhere safe and check on it in 2023. So that's how I would do it for myself as a teacher. And I think it's quite a powerful thing to actually think about what do I hope to do this year? Write it down. Don't be too hard on yourself. I think three goals is enough. And remember, don't write the word promise, because if you break your promise, that's very frustrating. And then set yourself a couple of times when you're going to open it and reevaluate your goals. Now let's have a look at how I would do it with my students or how I do it with my students. So here we go. So I hope you can see my screen. So. With my students, I would do it very much the same. We would begin with the A4 piece of paper. I'd ask them to hold it in landscape and I'd ask them to draw the circles. 
Next, I'd ask them to draw their own avatar. I would then ask them to put their pens down and think about June of next year and think about where would they like to be in June? How do they see themselves? What can they now do that they couldn't do at this point? Next, I'd ask them, as we did, to begin in the left and think about their free time and get them to draw something that they would like to achieve this year. So it might be something as simple as, I would love to get on the football team or the hockey team, or I would love to take up salsa dancing, or I would love to learn to draw still life. It could be absolutely anything, but remind them that we only want them to do one thing. And again, underneath, I would tell them the words, I hope to, and I would ask them to complete the sentence. Once they'd done that, we'd move to the right and we'd go to the home. And I'd ask them to be very, very critical with themselves, to think about, think about what you do at home and what you think you would like to change. So get them to really reflect on their social media use, the amount of television or videos they watch, do they cook? Would they like to learn to cook? What about their own bedrooms? How do they organize their bedrooms? Could their bedrooms be better organized? Get them to really think you'll probably have to help them a little bit. You might even want to brainstorm some ideas on the board and then get them to draw a picture and again, write a sentence. So something like, I plan to. Now, finally, this letter, we want to bring it into the classroom and we want them to reflect on school. Now, this is a very, very powerful tool because at this point we can now personalize things. <coughs> and if we know the students, we can obviously reflect on what they were like last year. Now, in this session, let's just think about things like reading and writing and think about what sort of, how could, you, how could your students improve in terms of reading? And I think we'd all like them to read more, but if we ask them to set a goal, which was, right, I'm gonna read six books, they're setting themselves up for failure. So we have to think in very, very simple terms, what could I realistically ask these students to do? Now in any class, there's a whole multitude of abilities, of levels, of interests. So why this is so powerful is that you could actually encourage different students to set different goals. So if you have somebody in the class who is a fantastic reader, you could perhaps set them something a little bit more challenging. And for the more reluctant readers, let's take it right down and say, okay, well, let's break this down. And maybe from now until Christmas, you could at least write, read three blog posts and report back to the class on it. And I'm gonna show you how we can do that through checklists. I'm just gonna mention the second option, which is writing. And again, we have very good writers and we have reluctant writers. So again, we want them to encourage to write down something that they would achieve. And again, we're gonna ask them to write a sentence. I'd like to with reading and I'd like to with writing. Now, as I mentioned, we can use checklists. This is a reading and writing checklist where the student puts their name at the top, they're the manager. This is a short duration checklist. So it's just September to December. And I've stated two things they have to do. In September, they have to write the letter to the future self. And in December, they need to open their letter, read it and check on progress. But I've left the rest blank for either you to complete or your students to come up with their own goals. Here's one I've completed for my own students. Um, and in this one, we're actually gonna be working on a project and the project is to find out about somebody they admire. So I've actually included that as part of the checklist where they're gonna be doing some research into somebody they admire, reading a blog, writing this person an email to find out some more information, and finally writing a short blog post about the person. So this would be the checklist and they can put a tick as they achieve them. But let's go back to the letter and let's look at what the letter would look like. Now here's the letter. 
So I would ask the students to copy this letter, put in their own goals and notice the line, how have I done? Because in December, I'm going to ask them to fold up the letter. They're going to write on the front not to be opened until December 2022 or June 2023. And when they open it in December, they're going to answer that question. How have I done? So as you can see, I feel this is a very, very powerful tool. It works well for reading and writing, but in actual fact, if you'd like your students to work on anything else, it would also work well for that. A couple of points. Notice I also encourage them to set goals for free time and also for home life, just to broaden it out a bit. And secondly, it can be personalized and you can decide what kind of content you would like them to include. Very, very powerful tool. And the students now can take more control of their learning. And I achieve one of my goals, which is to allow my students more space in my lessons. So thank you ever so much for listening to me. I'm going to call up Dell again, and I think he's going to round up the session for us. Hi, Dell. Hello, Emma. Thank you. Hi, that was, that was, yeah. Hi. That was really great. It was really lovely to uh, to listen to, and uh, and and as you promised, some really great ideas for the classroom. Uh, one thing I, I I noticed, and I'm not sure if if this was planned. I'm sure it's it's a plan, but that um, everything you talked about was um, things that they that that they should be doing rather than stopping. So mm. often when we write down our kind of plans it's like right I'm going to stop eating chocolate for example but there was none of that and I, I really liked that that it was actually I'm going to start doing this I'm going to com continue to do the oh, and that was really nice to see mm -hmm. I think it's the idea of turning over a new leaf mm -hmm. you know yeah. as we talk you know we, we've got this book and we're going to turn over the page and we're going to begin a new chapter and we're right. going to begin right. well and we're going to continue doing what we do well and and I think as and as I mentioned don't ask them to make promises because that's so yes. frustrating. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and can be really um, demoralizing when you when you realize you can't keep the promise, yeah. right? Because yeah. it's so that's negative. I, I also love the way that you uh, you incorporated not just learning, but also apart yeah. from uh, uh, you you mentioned about the home and uh, and and broadening the, uh, the 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 subject areas as well. I really like that. I thought that was yeah, very important you. for them to do that. Thank you. Lovely. So thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.